Yesterday was the release of Dragon's Dogma 2 and I was playing like crazy yesterday and here are my 10 tips that I wish I knew when I started the game and that the game doesn't make too clear for you. So I hope these help you and without further ado, let's get into it. So for my first tip, I want you to head out at night and look for lights in the dark, like that one over there. Those will be golden trove beetles and you can pick them up and they will increase the weight you can carry, which basically means increase your inventory space. Because in this game, you can carry an infinite amount of things as long as you have the strength to carry them. So for every golden, be golden trove beetle you pick up, you increase the weight you can carry by different amounts. I've seen before they were 0 0.05 kg. This one says it's 0 0.15. The second way that you can increase the weight you can carry is by making your character as large as possible. So if you did not do this through your character creation, there is another way that you can make your character larger if you want to use that method by speaking to Neomyth. This guy in the capital, you can buy the Art of Metamorphis book. This book costs 500 RC or rune crystals, I think they're called. And you can bring this book to a barber and they will let you customize your character once again. Basically, the, the more the character weighs, the more he can carry or she can carry. So you will want to make it as large as possible if you want to carry as much as possible. He stands right in the middle of the capital, right here. And then you have a barber right here. The third way that you can increase the max carry weight of your character is by buying rings of acrol, I think they're called. This one costs 6500G and it's from the vendor, the armor vendor in the capital. He stands right here in the capital. And these rings will increase the max amount that you can carry by 5kg. So those can be good as well. And if you're anything like me and pick up everything you see, you might want to grab one of these. There's also an augment that you can get from the guild halls if you're a fighter. Since that's not for all vocations, I will not go into that. Other than that, you will increase uh, your max carry load by 3 kg every five levels. So five, 10, 15, and so on. The second tip is maybe kind of obvious, but you can enhance your equipment. And this confused me a little bit, so I figured I'd go over it. Everything you buy or pick up uh, in the world, you can enhance and the merchant will tell you exactly what you need in order to upgrade your armor further. So as you can see here, I need two putrid gold tooth to upgrade this piece of armor. So I can upgrade this armor piece. And then if you want to upgrade your pawns, your main pawns armor, you will need to grab it from them, from their inventory. So go to items in the inventory and go to your pawn, unequip their armor, give it to your main character and then speak to the merchant. Uh, I can't upgrade this yet since here again I need the minotaur horns so I need to kill a bunch of minotaurs I guess. Side note here is if you want to buy a piece of armor make sure to look at what vocation can use this piece of armor before you buy it for you or your pawn. So here for example I can buy these two helmets and as you can see over at the right side here these can be used by fighters. But right here, this, this one is for archers, so I could buy this for my pawn, but I can't use it myself. I made that mistake myself, so that's why I'm telling you. Speaking of pawns, this brings me into my third tip for this video, which is your main pawn, basically. So at the guild halls, you will be able to acquire skills for both you and your main pawn. Uh, and make sure that you buy some nice skills and upgrade your pawn because other people will be able to hire your pawn and you will be able to hire other people's pawns. So make sure that your pawn has nice gear and good spells so that he will be attractive for other people to hire basically. So how this works is that you give your pawn a quest that he goes out to complete with another player and then he comes back and hopefully he has completed the quest or the other player completed the quest that you gave to your pawn and you will get rewards from it. So whenever you rest at an inn, you will get updated on what your pawn has done while you were playing or while you were offline. So rest at an inn, and hopefully when you come back, your pawn has returned from beyond the rift. So let's see what he got me. Uh, I set him out on a quest to receive four golden trove beetles because I want to increase my carry load. Uh, he did not complete the quest. 
I got one thumbs up and one like and a beast skin. The other player sent me a beast skin. So here you can also view the other player's profile, add him to favorites. I got 154 uh, RC. So that is what I need in order to upgrade my pawn and myself. So that's always great. So in order to set up your pawn quest, you will need to go to the Rift Stone in Vermund. It's in the center of the capital and examine it when you have entered the Rift and you can set a pawn quest. Here I can select what type of quest I want it to be, if I want them to earn a badge so that they can help me uh, defeat monsters or maybe acquire an item. And then you will set the reward for the other player. So I guess try to make it attractive, your quest, so that other players will hire your pawn. But I will keep mine as it is right now. When your pawns want to tell you something or have a, or have a suggestion for you, they, they will say it's follow me. So I press the go button. So now I can just follow them. Sometimes they show you a ladder or a chest or maybe the way to where you're going right now. They can even show you Seeker's tokens if they have come across them in their journeys with other players. When your pawn makes a suggestion like this, press the, the up pad for go and they will show you to the way to whatever, whatever they're suggesting. You can also use this at random when you're out in the world and just point them out in a direction and they will pick up and harvest things for you like this. Then you can just go into your inventory items and go to the the pawn that picked it up and you can give them to yourself if you need them or you can let your pawn carry them so you don't get too much equip load. So basically it's a very useful feature and I use it all the time so just press it at random when you're out and exploring. The next thing I want to talk about is giving gifts to vendors and NPCs. As you can see down here, I can give this vendor a gift. So if I press X or square in my case, since I have a dual shock, I can choose to give this vendor a bunch of flowers. I give this item as a gift and you can do this once a day. So don't do it more than once a day because it will not count towards your affinity with this specific vendor or NPC. He looks happy, he got this and from what I understand, increasing your affinity with, with vendors make it so that you can unlock some specific items that they usually do not sell, but since they have a high affinity towards you, they will sell you these items. Moving on quickly now, because I do not want to waste your time, these are port crystals. They can be found at major cities, and you need fairy stones in order to travel to these locations if you have activated them. At a later point in the game, you will be able to receive portable port crystals. That's a hard word. Portable port crystals. Uh, you will be able to have a maximum amount of 10 of these out in the world that you can travel to. And whenever you use your fairy stone, you will choose what location you want to travel to. Then there are the ox carts. If you want to travel with them, you can come to a sign like this. You see it on the minimap as a little ox. And then you just come up to these little signs and you await the ox cart. Then you just speak to the driver of the ox cart and he will want some money from you in order to travel with the ox cart. So I will board this, jump on and sit. And as you can see down in the right here, you have to press Y or triangle to douse off. If you don't do that, you will be sitting here for a long time. And now we have arrived at our location. Other than that, I don't think there are more means of traveling in this game. The final thing I want to talk about is some mechanics of the combat system. As you can see here, when these goblins hit me, I do not just lose health, I also lose a portion of my max health. And this is called the loss gauge. Uh, and in order to fill your health back up to max, or in order to be able to have max health again, you will need to rest. You can do this by resting at an inn, or which will cost you money, but you, will also, you might also get rewards from your pawns adventures. Otherwise, you need to set up a camp. And if you rest at this camp, you will you will be able, you'd, you, you could, you'd do. able to restore your loss gauge so you can get full health again. And while you are at your campsite, you can also cook food at the fire or manage the skills on you or your pawn. Just be careful because you might get attacked during your stay at the campsite. And if you fail to defend it, you will lose your camping kit. The second combat mechanic that I want to talk about is that enemies have elemental weaknesses. So for example, if you face a minotaur or maybe a griffin, 
you will want to use fire because they are weak to fire since they have fur, I guess. And this will give you a big advantage in the fight and they will fall over and you will do a lot more damage to them when they're burning. So figure out what your foe's weaknesses are and use that to your advantage. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope these tips helped you out and because they sure took me a while to figure out as a new player or new to this game. If they helped you in any way, please consider giving us a like and a subscribe. And I will see you guys again, hopefully. Peace. Ha <laughs> ha!